Okay, so in this video, we will discuss the concept of continuity. We'll see that continuity essentially means that there is no break in the function. So here's the definition. We have a function f of x, and we say f of x is continuous at a specific value of x, so we could say at x0. So think of x0 being a fixed value of x, and so f of x is continuous at x0 if the fung equality is valid. So if the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 is equal to the value of the function at x0. And that's it. And let's see why this definition means that if indeed f of x0 is equal to the limit of f of x as x is approaching x0, then this implies that there is no break in the function. Now, before we look at this graphically, think of the implications here. Both are equal, so by assumption, both f of x0 and the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 must be defined, so they both must be real numbers, and they have to be equal. Now sometimes to find the limit of f of x, we'll have to look at the limit from the left and from the right, so you can think of it in this way. For our function f to be continuous at a given value of x, say x0, the following three quantities must exist and be equal. So f of x0 must exist, the limit as x approaches x0, say from the left, must also exist, and the same must be true, of course, of the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 from the right. Now, of course, you will only look at the limit from the left and from the right if there is a need. If you can evaluate the limit of f of x directly, do so. If not, always fall back on the limit from the left and from the right. So to have continuity, all of these three quantities must exist and be equal. And by saying exist, I mean they have to actually be equal to a real number. We reject here positive and negative infinity. So let's look at this graphically. Assume, just for argument's sake, that x0 is a positive value of x. Suppose here's x0. First thing, f of x0 must be a real number. Again, for argument's sake, suppose that f of x0 is positive. So the function is defined at x0. And now we're saying as x approaches x0 from the left-hand side, so as x is approaching, so getting closer and closer to x0, the function f of x is approaching the value that is f of x0. So you could imagine the graph may be increasing, and as x is approaching x0 from the left, the graph of the function will have to be approaching the y value f of x0. And the same must be true from the right. As we are letting x approach x0 from the right, the function f of x must also be approaching the value of the function at the point x0. And so you see that all this implies, hence the word continuity, means that there is no break in the function at x0. On an interval, we say a function is continuous if it is obviously continuous at every point inside the interval. So always think of intuitively continuity meaning no break in the function. Now, this is really 
a non-trivial statement, which is true, and we'll take this for granted, all of your familiar functions, if you think of polynomials, rational functions, power functions, trigonometric functions, inverse trigonometric functions, logarithmic functions, exponential functions, are all continuous functions on their domain. So wherever they are defined, they are automatically continuous. And in this course, we'll take this for granted. And so when we look for discontinuities, continuity means no break. Discontinuity means that there is a break in the function. And so when we look for discontinuities, points where the function is not continuous, we'll look at points where the function may be undefined. So that's really it as far as continuity goes. In the next videos, we will consider three types of discontinuities, namely a removable discontinuity, a jump discontinuity, and an infinite discontinuity.